Hello, everyone. I'm so excited that you're here um, for Congress 2021. I cannot wait till we're all together again next year. Let me have my special guest come in with me and then we'll introduce ourselves. And here she comes, praise the Lord. So this is Reverend Janine Daly, everyone. Hello, everyone. And I am Dr. Pamela Hardy. I have the honor and the privilege of overseeing the dance ministry at the National Baptist Congress. And I've been there, gosh, for over 15 years now. So we're family. And as I said, I can't wait to until we're all together again next year. Praise God. But for this year, we're here. We're share, uh, here to share with you. I'm going to introduce myself, and then I'll let her tell you a little about herself, and then we'll jump into the teaching. So as I said, I am Dr. Pamela Hardy. I live in Dallas, Texas, received a master's degree in dance from Southern Methodist University, went to New York City, and I had the honor and the privilege and the awesome fun of being able to dance on Broadway for several years, and that's actually where I got saved came to know the Lord there. And at that time, um, as they say, I just changed partners. <laughs> so um, the Lord said, I'm going to take you all over the world to um, to dance for me. And he's ju done just that. So I just want to say whatever God has put in your heart to do, just be obedient, just surrender to him and he will do great and mighty things beyond what you could ever even imagine. So Reverend Janine, thank you for being with us. Tell everybody a little something about yourself. Yes, hello everyone. My name is Reverend Janine Daly and I am so excited to be able to be with you all here virtually. I have had the awesome honor of being able to attend with Dr. Pamela Hardy, the National Baptist Congress a few times. And so I'm excited about that. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about myself, I am a pastor of a church in the African Methodist Episcopal uh, denomination, and I have been pastoring now for almost three years, but I am also a dance ministry leader and have been leading dance ministers for quite some time. Um, I've led the dance ministry um, at the church I served before I was appointed pastor and oversaw that for about 12 years, as well as on the um, connectional level in the district level, I serve on the dance leadership team. So I'm excited to be able to just be here with you for these moments. Amen, 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 amen. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna share first. I have had, you know, some experience um, in leading dance ministries, but I'm gonna let her share with you on that. I'm gonna share with you first on some biblical foundations because no matter where you are in the ministry of dance, you must lay a foundation in the word. Yeah. That's where we're going to start. And then she's going to share with you about leadership and about um, operating a dance ministry. Um, and then we're going to come back with some other things at the end. So I hope that you are in a place where you can take notes. I hope you're in a place where you can listen. I hope you're in a place where you can share with others. Um, and as far as I know, this is going to be repeatable in the sense that you'll be able to go back and watch it um, at a later time. It should be, I think, on the website. So let's just jump in. Father, I thank you for everyone who is gathering with us today. I pray that the word of God will go forth into their hearts and into their spirits and will bring forth the life and the ministry that you desire that will bring glory to your name and advance your kingdom in the name of Jesus, amen, amen. Now, Reverend Janine, if you feel like you're jumping in there anytime, don't hesitate, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, biblical foundations. First of all, I heard someone say one time, the only things that don't move are dead things. So everything that God creates has life, right? So the first time we see actually movement mentioned is in Genesis where it says, oh, Spirit of the Lord hoovered over the face of the waters. Yes. So God is a God of movement. When you think about it, the earth revolves. I mean, there's nothing about God that's just still. <laughs> He's a God of movement. But when you look at the first mention of dance, you're gonna look at Exodus chapter 15, verse 20. And you might remember that story of the children of Israel when they 
in bondage to Pharaoh all those years, which is a type of the world. Mm -hmm. And they cried out to God and God delivered them. And it says that he brought them through the Red Sea, which represents the fact that we have been brought out of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we have been brought through the blood of Jesus. Glory, yes. Glory, Glory to God. Glory. Now, it is very significant that Miriam, who was the sister of Moses, who God used to deliver the children of Israel, it's very significant that she was the one who was leading the dance because of her relationship to the deliverer. Mm -hmm. And it was a custom in those days for the closest female relative to meet or greet a returning victor after they had won a battle. So, who is our returning victor? Jesus! <laughs> and guess what that makes us? That makes us his betrothed, um, his closest female relative. And as his return gets closer and closer, mm -hmm. Reverend Janine, everyone who's watching, I really believe that we're going to see an increase in dancing. Yes, so yeah. If you've noticed on television, right? There's dance shows all the time. Um, um, yes. We see what God is doing in the church and in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. In Jeremiah 31, 13, it says, in the last days, these yes. are the last days, everybody. The women <laughs> shall rejoice in the dance, both young men and old men together. But that word virgin translates as the word bride. Yes. Telling us, yes, and in the last days, which we can clearly see we are living in, right? Mm -hmm. That his betrothed, that's us, the bride is going to rejoice in the dance. Mm -hmm. And then you can look at Zephaniah 3 and 17. It says that the Lord rejoices over us. Mm -hmm. and yes, when you read that, it means he spins around mm -hmm. under the influence of a violent emotion because he loves us so much so the lord actually rejoices over us so whenever you see the word rejoice family it means to jump for joy praise Ooh. god and rejoice in the lord it means jump for joy okay jump for joy psalm 149 verse 3 psalm 150 verse 4 those are scriptures we know let them praise his name in the dance so let means we have permission them means everybody. Praise is the word halal. That's where we get the word hallelujah. And it means to shine and to boast and to just act clamorously foolish before God in worship. And then it says to praise it in the dance. Now, that particular word for dance, because dance means different things in different scriptures. So I want to encourage you. We want to encourage you. Study, 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 right? Yes, yes. Show yourselves approved unto God because dance means different things in different scriptures. So in that particular scripture, dance means when they, it was, it's a round dance, it's a circle dance. And it was done when they came together to worship the Lord, when they came together around an altar, um, much like we do when we gather together on Sundays for church. Um, and so that's what it means in that particular, in that particular scripture. And like I said, it means other things. So I'm going to let you study that part out. Oh, but in Psalm 511, again, it says that um, let all who put their trust in him rejoice. Woo! So again, if you trust in the Lord, jump up and down and rejoice in him. Now, there's plenty more in the Old Testament. I didn't even touch on David dancing before the Lord. Woo! I'll just say this little bit. Yes. And he danced. If you study that out, it means that David was leaping and stamping wildly for joy, Woo! as if the limbs of his body were going to come off. I mean, he was dancing. Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Let's jump over to the New Testament real quick. So there was a lady who danced for a king. Yes. Salome danced before King Herod. You guys might remember this story. Mm -hmm. um, if not, you should go back and read it. Um, and it says that his her dance pleased him so much mm -hmm. that he said, ask anything you want up to half of my kingdom. And we know 
that she asked for the hand of John the Baptist. Yes. So let's think of it like this, Reverend Janine. If our lives, please, the king, and that was an earthly king. That was right? an earthly king. Come yeah. on. But if our lives, please, the king, we could ask what we want. And he's already said, I will give you the kingdom. All right. you have to do is ask for the kingdom. He said, I'll give you the king, all the kingdom, not half the kingdom. Oh, all of it. <laughs> all and of then, it. Did you know, this is, this is exciting to me, that Jesus it's recorded that Jesus danced with his disciples at the Last Supper. Oh. Yes, it is recorded that way because, you know, even some of the ancient writings. Yes, yes. You want to dig deep. Mm. Yes, yeah, some of the ancient writings. Because why? Well, because dance was normal at weddings. Oh, yeah. And so he would have danced at the wedding of Cana. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, when he turned the water into wine, it is yeah. recorded yeah. that he danced with them, like I said, at the Last Supper. That would not have been unusual. Well, we have a dancing God. Woo! Hallelujah, everybody. And then Revelation chapter 19, verse 7. Let us rejoice. There's that word rejoice again. And be glad. Why? That the marriage supper of the Lamb has come. And the bride, again, that's us, has made herself ready. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, this is our preparation time, everybody. This is our season of making ourselves ready because at the marriage supper of the Lamb, it's going to be some rejoicing. Yes. I could just be sitting, sitting around looking sad, but we're going to be some very happy rejoicing people. <laughs> and before I give it over to her, I just want to mention quickly, there are dances of praise mm -hmm. that really have to do with who God is mm -hmm. and what God has done. Right. There right. are dances of worship that have to do with who he is and the fact that he's holy, he's mm -hmm. righteous, he's sovereign. Mm -hmm. So we worship him, okay? There are spontaneous dances that are not choreographed. You just want to give the Lord worship from your heart and I pray that everybody's watching. I pray that you spend time with the Lord every day in the word, that you spend time in worship, that you spend time in prayer. And listen, if you decide to, as they say, cut a rug and dance before the Lord, it will bring him joy. Yeah. There are dances of celebration. That's really the kind of dance that Miriam and the children of Israel did. It said that Miriam, back to Exodus 15 and 20, Miriam had a tambourine in her hand. Yes. While she sang. While she sang. While she danced. While she oh, danced. Come on, somebody. Sure yeah. did. She sure did. And so they celebrated their victory over the enemy. Come on now. That's a good reason to dance right there. God has given us good. victory over the enemy. Yeah. In Colossians, it says that he has spoiled principalities and powers. Yeah. Made a show of him openly, took the keys, and he marched to victory. Glory to God. Woo. Then there are prophetic dances, okay? That has to do really with hearing from heaven. God, what are you saying? And how do you want me to release that in the earth? How do I become a visual demonstration yeah. of what you're wanting to say? Oh. But there are prophetic dances from the heart of God that he wants to release to his people. Mm -hmm. There are warfare dances mm -hmm. okay, that have to do with the authority of our feet. Did you know that your feet represent authority? Yeah. Every pit, everywhere you go, the soles of your feet represent authority. He said in Psalm 1840, I've given you the neck of your enemies. Woo! So when you dance, dance with assurance, dance yeah. with power, dance yeah. with faith, dance with assurance. And then Luke 10, 19 says, we tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm us. Then there are dances of intercession. There's sometimes you just don't quite know what to say, but you know you need to call on God and it comes out in a, in a movement of intercession. So that's just a little bit. About a little bit. That was good. A little bit about biblical foundations. Again, we challenge you. 
dig, dig, dig. If you're in the ministry of dance, lay that foundation in the word because you'll have something solid to build on. I also want to recommend really quick. This is my book. It's called Dance the Higher Call. Dr. Pamela Hardy. You can find it on Amazon.com. Dance the Higher Call. God's glorious mandate for transforming your life, reflecting his son and revealing his glory. So it tells you how to answer the call to dance ministry and then what to do after you answer the call. Because the call, no matter what, starts with your heart. Right. So this right. book deals with the heart, making sure your motivation is right. right. You put a good heart with the word you build on the scriptures. Man, your ministry will be a blessing. God will be able to anoint it. Yes. and blessing to everyone that God sends you mm. to minister to. Yes. So, Reverend Janine, talk to us for a little Ooh. bit about operating a dance yes. ministry. And you might have yes. leaders here, so talk to them also. Yes, awesome. That was amazing. And <laughs> a lot of those scriptures that, I mean, Dr. Pamela mentioned are scriptures that are important particularly as dance ministry leaders. And I want to first go back to that scripture where dance is first mentioned in the Bible, Exodus 15, 20, then Miriam the prophet, Aaron's sister, took a timbrel in her hand and all the women followed her. Some translations say, and she led the women in dance. And that is Exodus 15, 20. And it's important to understand that dance ministries need a leader and that it is important that there is an appointed leader. There is one that has been called by God who has been anointed and appointed. And that in addition to leading the dance ministry, that as leaders, we're not just dancers, but that we are so much more than dancers. We see here in the scripture that Miriam was a prophetess. And we have the responsibility to release God's word to God's people in the now. What's God saying now? Miriam responded in what was happening now. She received revelation. Yes, she responded as a sibling of Moses, yet she responded to what God was doing and what God was saying. The nation was free. And so she didn't respond and do a dance of mourning or grief. She didn't respond and uh, do a dance that was out of line in terms of what God was doing. She was in line with what was happening and she responded to that. So as dance leaders, we wanna make sure that we understand that we are much more than leaders. God has placed individuals under our leadership and that is such a privilege for us. Miriam was part of the leadership team. It says in Micaiah 6, 4, that I brought you out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you, also Aaron and Miriam. So she was part of the leadership team. So as dance leaders, we are part of the leadership team in our churches, amen. And we might, we have our, our pastor or our bishop or whoever, you know, is the lead of that church, but we are part of the leadership team and we respond to what he or she sets forth, amen. And we wanna make sure that we're in alignment, that we catch the vision, that we understand the vision. We know what season our churches in and what the messages are. That's really important. So that's the first thing I wanted to just release on you that our leadership is awesome. And we're not just going to rehearsal, teaching dance and listening to music and trying to come up with steps that it is so much bigger than that. And that we have to begin to understand how God is using us to help shift not only those we lead, but the worship experience in the congregation, in the churches. We can shift the atmosphere. We can shift. We can help heal. We can help deliver. We can help set captives free. But if the dance leader doesn't know that, uh -huh. no one else will know that. And so we have a responsibility to not only teach those that we are leading, but to also help those in our churches understand that the dance ministers 
understand what they are doing. Amen. And um, I'm sorry, I keep calling her apostle. Dr. Pamela Hadi said this earlier, that it's important that we understand that we have been called, right? Because oftentimes people might be appointed as a dance leader because they might be gifted in dance. They might know somebody. They might serve on the deacon board or the trustee board. But we really should be called to this ministry. If we are not called, we create more conflict. Yes. And there's a lot of confusion because we are serving for the wrong reasons. We always want to know what our heart is, where we are coming from. So I want to go and do a little bit of uh, some Greek words. I want to put forth before you Korygeo. It's C-H-O-R-E-G-E-O. That is a Greek word, and it means to be a dance chorus leader. It means to furnish abundantly, to supply. And it's uh, two times where it is mentioned or the word supply, furnish abundantly, is in the New Testament. And I want to give you those two scriptures. The first is Corinthians 9.10. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. And so Korageo, in addition to the Greek word meaning to supply, to be a dance and chorus leader, that word really came from, um, it was a Greek, uh, they had theater, if you will. And it was a Corregejo who had the title, the position to make sure that the production took place no matter what. So that person took on the ownership and they would supply everything that was needed to make sure that that uh, production, that chorus went forth. And so when they translated the Greek uh, New Testament into English, they took that word metaphorically because it means to supply abundantly and they put it in those scriptures. So when we have been called, God will supply everything that we need to get the job done. And we as leaders will supply everything because we believe and we know that God has called us. And that's the difference between somebody who has been called and somebody who has not. We are willing. It's just a spirit. We want to have a Corrigale spirit. We are willing to do whatever we need to do, whether that is take training, whether that is invest in some, you know, use some of our own resources, what Whatever it is to not only make sure that the ministry goes forth, but that everybody has what they need, that they are trained, that the ministry that we're leading has the resources and the tools and that they are equipped. So I go back to what I said earlier. We're not just going in to do a dance. It is so much more than that. The other scripture where the word supply is or corrigeo is 1 Peter 4.11. If anyone speaks they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides. There's that word. If you look at that word, um, the Greek word there, the translation for supply is korageo. Um, God supplies to us and he will give us what we need. So it's, it's really important that we begin to understand that when we know that we've been called, we change. We change, we approach ministry differently. We, we respond differently when we have been called. Let's look at what happens. And uh, we know the story of Mary, the mother of Jesus in Luke 1, 34 and 35. The angel went and really told her that she was going to have this baby. She said, how can this be? I haven't been with man. And the angel said to her, well, uh, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. He will overpower you. And that when, when Mary heard that, after she heard that, she released herself and she said, I am the Lord's servant. And that is, if you read that in Luke 1, 34 and 35, she was a young teenage girl. But after she realized that God had called her, that she was the chosen one out of all of the women in that region and the world, God chose her. And Mary said, here am 
I, I am willing to do whatever you want me to do. And the great thing is, is that God will grace us with everything we need. It doesn't matter what we come up against. It doesn't matter what happens because he has chosen us for this assignment. He will make sure that it goes forth. And that is really important. So we want to ask ourselves, has God called me to this? Am I doing this for the right reason? You know, dance is popular. A lot of people are doing it, but we want to make sure that we are in this position and we're serving for the right reasons, not popularity, not a platform, but because we want to lift up God. Amen. And, and, um, you know, we have to really understand I think, not I think, I know, as leaders, all the scriptures that Dr. Pamela mentioned, as dance ministry leaders, we should know where dance is in the Bible. We should know where it is in scripture. And it's not a whole lot of scriptures. You know, it's not a whole lot, but we should really know where dance is in the Bible. We should know that with dance, dance can be both good and bad. And so what happened when we saw dance in the scriptures in Exodus 15, 20, they were dancing for deliverance. But she also talked about in the New Testament with Salam. And what happens if we dance and we are dancing from a fleshly place? What happens when we bring that into our congregations? Again, as leaders, we want to be able to teach those we lead the importance of dance, the importance of what we wear, our garments, covering ourselves and, and making sure that we are tight and right. Amen. <laughs> that we, you know, our garments aren't see-through. You can't see through things. These are things that are really important as dance leaders, that it is our responsibility to know, it is our responsibility to understand and to be able to get training. I cannot say enough about training. Show thy, show, study to show thyself approved. We all know that scripture, but it is true. Training will equip you. It will give you what you need. It will also help you with your power and authority so you can do what you need to do with those that you lead, that you're not timid, that you have an understanding of, of, of some of the biblical foundations and why you're doing what you're doing because God has called you um, and that you are going forth in this season with that assignment. Amen. A couple of other things. I have a, is that, do I have a couple of minutes? Oh, yes, you do. Okay. You're okay. Good. You're good. Yeah, good. And so those, that again, those are just some quick things that I wanted to share in reference to leading. Um, the other thing that I wanted to share, there are a few principles of kingdom leadership as we think about leading others, because how we live is how we lead. Or another way to say that is, what is going on with us impacts how we lead, sure. if that makes sense. And so um, we, you know, we want to make sure that our life is righteous. We want to make sure that our, we are living a holy life, that we are uh, not dipping in and out. You know, this ministry is not a ministry of convenience. It's a lifestyle. Again, God has placed um us in an incredible place to serve and we also are leading others and so they're paying attention to what we do and how we live and just a few questions does your lifestyle reflect the life of Jesus um, does your lifestyle contribute to the growth and development of others uh, when you open your mouth do words of encouragement strength hope and love flow out of your mouth or are you one who always complain and or do you talk about others and speak doubt and fear so when you're leading others you can't you can't go in and, and speak doubt and fear you want to encourage you want to help them grow you want to help them understand why are they doing what they are doing um the impact and power of this dance ministry if you if we're leading others if we don't know, they won't know. And if the dance ministry doesn't know what they're doing, I guarantee you the people that you're ministering to will not get the message because there'll be confusion. So I like to say either we'll be an effective ministry or we'll be an effective mess 
because he's the or if we don't have our stuff in order, right? This is what comes out. Do we tithe to our church, in our church? That's important as a leader. Do we have a lifestyle of prayer and worship? Do we submit to authority? We got to be able to submit to authority, be in order at our churches, be able to listen to our leadership. And um, are we open to hearing and receiving criticism and feedback? I teach leaders and one of the things that um, I encourage them to do is to meet with their leaders and to have an open conversation about the dance ministry, about their leadership and what has been working and what has not been working. And what I found is that many uh, leaders have not done this before. So this creates an incredible opportunity for discussion and engagement and for the the pastor or the leader if they have any issues with the dance ministry to feel like it's okay because we're saying we want to grow we want to be the best that we can be and so we're open to your feedback and so some um, feedback that they have gotten has been on both sides oh you are incredible we wish you would minister more or, well, you know, every time we want you to minister, you can't get it together. You know, your garments are, they're not, you know, things are a little odd about your garments. Um, you know, your songs really, people can't understand what the lyrics are. So again, this might not be your situation, but it doesn't hurt to have that conversation because again, you want to be in alignment. You want to make sure people are understand the words to the song just because we think it's great to dance to. That's not what, you know, God's not releasing us to dance to a great song. He's releasing us to minister his word so people can see him through our movements. Um, so the other thing is you should know your gifts and uh, as a ministry leader and you can find those first Corinthians 12 really talks about those spiritual gifts. There are a lot of spiritual gifts assessments and that can really help you uh, in your growth and development in your leadership because if you don't have certain skills or aren't gifted, you can think about others. Um, and working with others. And that is how we build up others as well. We can't do everything. So there are others on your team that might have different gifts. There are others on your team who might be able to choreograph. There are others on your team who can prophesy. There are others on your team who can do the, the Bible study, who can do the prayer. As leaders, we don't have to do anything. And it's not a threat just because somebody has a gift of choreography and you're the leader. If they have the gift of choreography, let them choreograph. It doesn't mean you're a bad leader. It doesn't mean that, um, you know, something's wrong. It means that you are empowering him or her to use their gift to help get the assignment done that God has sent forth for you all to do. So that that's a lot in a little bit of time. Oh now. my gosh, that was so good. There's so many nuggets in there. I hope you guys were taking notes. There's one thing I want you to talk about really quick and then we'll go on is unity. Why is unity in the dance ministry important? Yes. Why is that important? And then you yes. trust one another and love yes. one another and don't right. let the enemy come in. That's right. Unity is so important because when there is disunity, there'll be, of course, division. And the enemy loves to try to creep in and create uh, disunity. Okay. We know that we are all on one accord and we have an assignment. That's why we have to understand as leaders, what is our assignment? Mm -hmm. It's not to be seen, it's not to receive accolades, it's not any of those things. Our main assignment is to release God's word, right? And as if we're able to communicate that to the dance ministry as well. And so the importance of being together in, in unity, right? Just because you have different skill sets, somebody can has dance technique and others may not, it doesn't mean this person is better off. It means that God can use us in a variety of different ways. And so if we pray together, if we begin to understand why we're doing this, what our mission is, what our assignment is 
as one to release God's word to God's people, that will help. Uh, where there is unity, uh, we know the scripture. Yes, um, yeah, that God commands yes. the blessing. Wow. And what happens is we we move out of God's assignment and we begin to get caught up in our fleshly desires. Yes. And that is what creates disunity. Yes. So God's yes. desire is for yes. us to lift him up, yes. lift the name of Jesus up, being led by Holy Spirit. Yes. Yet we get caught up and we're trying to plead, you know, we're feeding the flesh. Well, I should be doing that solo and I need to be <laughs> in the front. And how come I can't wait, you know, do the flags? And how come I can't? And you know, that's not that's not how God works. God speaks to us. And we respond to God, what he's saying in the now. And we all have a part in moving God's kingdom forward. Mm -hmm. Moses, he gets really the credit for leading um, the Israelites out of Egypt. But his brother was his spokesperson. True. Miriam was there. So they played an important role. They were in the, the They were a team. Yeah. They were a team. And they had to be on one accord. Yes. And although Moses got the direction, they worked together. And That's we, good. it's important that we work together. That's good. I'm going to um, piggyback on a couple of things she said. Number one, she said training is important. Yes. Well, if you're an adult, I have some good news for you. We have a place for you to receive training. Um, I am the founder. Thank you, Jesus. Well, the Lord gave it to me. He's the founder <laughs> of Eagles International Training Institute. It's yes. an online school. We are an accredited school. We're going into our 17th year. God is good. And we have a whole plethora of courses that you can study from. Yes. And one of them is dance. I teach the dance year one course. Mm -hmm. And Reverend Janine teaches the dance leadership course. Yes. So we are a team. We work together. I'm going to tell you how to reach me. She's going to tell you how to reach her. If you want more information, again, you can take it from wherever you live. Yes. Because it's online. It's a one year really in-depth study. Um, God has blessed us now to be in over 20 different nations, but that's our heart. Yes. Equip the saints for the work of the ministry. So if you feel like the dance ministry is your call and you want to be equipped, you go to Eagles with an S, eaglesiti.org. That's the website, eaglesiti.org. And you'll see all of the many classes there because we have a school of the arts, a school of business, and a school of theology. Mm -hmm. Or you can just email me directly at dr. Pamela Hardy, the number one, at AOL.com. Dr. Pamela Hardy, one at AOL.com. How do the dance ministers reach you? Yes, yeah, so um, you would email me at Corregeo, C H O R E G E O, at Eagles with an S, I T I dot org, O R G. You can email me, and uh, it's specifically for dance ministry leaders who are leading ministries in churches. Amen. Well, we have a few minutes, so I want to touch really quickly on choreography. Yes. Can, okay. We have to remember that choreography is God's word in motion, that dance is a language, and God wants to speak through us. Yes. And so it's not just, okay, what should I do here? What should I do there? But it really is just, just hearing from God. Your preparation for choreography has to be both spiritual and mm -hmm. physical. Yes. So you've got to get into the word, God, what do you want to say? Yes. How do you want to say it? Yes. Because he's not, not going to always minister the exact same way Sunday after Sunday or psalm after psalm or dance after dance. Right. Um, one of the things that we agree on, I know, is that you should not have a public ministry without a private one. Absolutely. So our first call is to minister to the Lord. Yes. And then we hear from heaven, as I said, and then we release it to the earth. Yeah. We have a really dear friend named Vivian Hibbert. And Vivian says that as dancers, we carry the sights of God. Yes. In other words, people should be able to see something about God through our movements, not yes. just, oh, she can dance. Wow, did you see that turn? Wow, okay. she can high. Or, yes. you know, 
what of Jesus are they seeing when mm. it's a, a, we're, we're ministering on healing, yes. or deliverance, or yeah. the love of God, mm. or the joy of the Lord? Absolutely. Should be the sights of God. Yes, yes. Ever that we're doing, we're not yeah. just filling time and space. No, right? no. With our choreography, movement has mm. a purpose. Yes. So we surrender to the Lord. And again, we say, Lord, what do you want to say? How do you want to say it? And then everybody, there's directions. Mm -hmm. um, you can't just face the front all the time, right? So right. there's eight different directions you can face. There's different levels, whether it's bowing or kneeling. Um, you can add so many things to your choreography. Uh, mm -hmm. Bowing, kneeling, walking, running, turning, changing directions, changing levels, changing yeah. dynamics. I mean, you'll learn all of this. Right. Mm -hmm. in, in, in EITI, in our dance courses. <laughs> um, or we can come and share. I travel, she mm -hmm. travels. We'll be happy to come and share with just your dance ministry yes. uh, and help your dance ministry grow if that's something that you're interested in. But through our movements, we should be able to show sorrow to joy, mm -hmm. or grief to deliverance. We should be able to, to have enough dance vocabulary to be able to minister to God's people right. whatever message he wants to say. Go ahead, uh, Reverend Janine. That is so true. I, I like to say choreography with purpose because, yes. you know, um, that is the difference between a dancer or dancers who are just dancing to perform yes. versus those who are ministering God's word. And our facial expressions are part of choreography as well. So much. So, yes. And an example is, you know, oftentimes we might hear a song, we might think of choreography to put into it. But as Dr. Pamela says, what is God saying? What are we trying to release? What is the, the word that we're trying to release? And so if it's a song of deliverance, for example, and we are... Uh, we're showing how God delivers. Then when we're teaching choreography as leaders, we would say, we're not going to say, okay, we're going to turn two times to the right. What we're going to say is God has released us and has delivered us from this bondage. So we are going to turn into our freedom, leaving our bondage behind. And it does something for even those who are ministering to know that you are turning into your new, turning into your deliverance. And that is how we want to teach choreography because not only will people begin to say, oh, she, she is really turning into something. That's what we want. We, they want, we want them to see how God is speaking to his people through the movements. Amen. Yes. Listen, you guys, we could go on and on and on, but I'm going to close with this. She mentioned something earlier. Here am I, send me, right? The first mention of worship because that's really what dance is. See, when we answer the call to God, we answer the call to worship him. Mm. It's just that we, we express our worship, some of us through dance, okay? Mm. But the call is not to dance, the call is to worship. Mm. Mm -hmm. So the first mission of worship is in Genesis chapter 22. And I'm sure you remember when Abraham, God asked Abraham to sacrifice his son, Isaac, that thing that was so special and so precious to him. And do you know what he said? He said, I and the lad, meaning him and his son, we're going to go and worship yes. and return to you. Now, he didn't have an iPad. He didn't have an iPod. He didn't have his favorite worship team up there with him. <laughs> Come on, right? He didn't have a Sunday morning worship. No, he didn't have any of that. So I was going to go and worship. He went to offer the Lord that thing which meant the most to him his heart, his life, his son, that promise, because his son was the promise, right? So he, he lays his son there. Now, mind you, he wasn't a child. If you go back and study, um, Isaac was not young, a young boy at this time. But he lays him there. And what trust there must have been for him to allow his father to be able to, to place him in this, this, this um, um, the altar 
to get ready to be sacrificed. But nevertheless, he raises up, you know, the, the, the instrument he's going to strike his son. And the angel says, Abraham, Abraham, calls his name. And Abraham says, here am I. Yes. Here am I. It's the word Hineni. And you spell that H-I-N-E-N-I. Hineni means here am I. That is what God is looking for in dance ministers in any area of ministry. He's looking for somebody to say, here am I, not here am I, and Lord, just do what I want you to do. No, it's here am I. He mainly is a bottom line statement. I'm drawing the line. I'm not allowing the enemy in. Here I am, Lord, my mind, my body, my soul, my spirit, my will, my time, my emotions, uh uh-oh, my finances, uh uh-oh, every part of who we are, God, here I am. How how can I serve you? That's worship. And there is no worship without obedience. Yes, yes. So he brought everything to the Lord in obedience. And you know the rest of the story. Uh, He had to kill him, sacrifice him. There was a ram caught in the bush. Glory to God. Uh, But that is the first time we see worship. I want to encourage you, go back and study that. Go back and listen to this teaching again. Write down all the scriptures. Write down everything Reverend Janine said. Study it. And if this is your call, show yourself approved unto God. Be that workman. Yes. Rightly divides the word of truth, needing not to be ashamed in your ministry. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you to close anything else you want to say and then close us in prayer. And I'm just going to say thank you, everybody, for joining us before she closes us in prayer. We look, for, look forward to seeing you guys at Congress 2022. Woo, woo, woo. That was amazing. Yes. Here am I. Here I. Here am I. I just agree with everything. Um, it is worship and obedience. I mean, oh my goodness, uh, oftentimes it's hard to be obedient, but ministry is not a ministry of convenience. We say, I'm willing, let just just say what you need, God. Uh, and and I'm willing. Amen. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so Father God, we thank you for everybody who will be watching this. And we just thank you for what you're doing in their lives as you are have chosen them for such a time as this to release your word through sight to the people, oh God. We thank you for the anointing on their life. And we pray as they are listening that they are that things be, are beginning to stir in their spirit, that they're getting excited about this assignment, that they are they begin to understand that they are more than just a dancer, but that you, God, are using them to help shift their church, help shift their nation, help shift their communities, even in their homes, oh God. So we thank you, oh God. Let every word sink in, oh God. Let them soak in on the scriptures, oh God, and let them just open their minds to all of what it is that you have for them in this season. We thank you for everything that you're doing in their lives, and we just speak increase and expansion in their lives, that they will move to another level, that you will give them what they need as they continue to impact your kingdom through dance. It is in Jesus' mighty, precious, powerful, matchless name that we pray. Amen. 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 You know, while you were praying, there's one more thing that came to my mind. I'm not sure who this is for, but just know that God is holy and that he doesn't want us to come before him with bad attitudes um, with one foot in the world, one foot in the church, mm-hmm. be all in for Christ. Be all in. Be all in. Give him 100%. Let him do the work Wow. in your heart and in your life. Mm-hmm. Because it's only the anointing that will destroy the yokes. It's not our wonderful choreography or our beautiful garments. Mm-hmm. Only the anointing of God upon your life that will destroy the yokes. Yeah. May the Lord bless you, keep you, watch over you, make his face to shine upon you and grant you peace. Reverend Janine, thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. God bless you Everybody, all. Everybody, we speak blessings to uh, President LaDonna and everyone yes. at the Boyd Corporation. We love you all dearly. We speak blessings over Vision Conference 2021. 2021. Uh, praise God. We love yes. you all. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.